So now let's handle different kinds of shapes. So right now I handle a rectangle. Um, let's go ahead and handle rectangles and circles. And I'm going to do this two ways. So the first way I'm going to do it is sort of an easy, obvious way, but it doesn't scale well as my code becomes more complicated. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to refactor the code um, to be easily extendable and reusable. So the simple, obvious thing to do is first we're going to have a shape type. And I'm going to associate my shape type with the shape class so that I can access it even before I have any shapes at all, any shape objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my shape shape type property. So I'm setting a property of the class now. And if you've worked in other programming languages like Java or C Sharp, um, this is equivalent to a static property, um, a property on the shape rather than a property on an object. And I'm going to set it to a new object and uh, these will be a list of the shapes I'm going to support. And the idea here is that there are constant values. So I'll support rectangle, which is the value 1, and circle, which is the value 2. So now I can refer to shape.shapeType.capitalRectangle, and I'll get back to constant value 1 or shape.shapeType.circle is the constant value 2. And then I want to basically lock this up so that nobody can change it by changing any of these values or adding new values to this object um, because uh, the implementation won't do the right thing. So in order to lock this, I'm going to make use of a language feature that isn't present in all versions of JavaScript called object.freeze. So what I want to type is object.freeze shape shape type, and that will make shape type basically read only, but only if object.freeze is defined. So before I do this, what I want to do is check if object.freeze is not equal equal undefined, then I want to freeze my object. So then inside the code, inside the draw function, I want to do something different if the object is a rectangle versus it's a circle. So in my draw function, well, this code is really drawing a rectangle. So I'm going to rename this to draw rectangle. And I'm going to create a new draw method, this.draw. And I'm going to switch on mProperties.type. So I'm going to have a type property on my shape. And if the type is rectangle, then I'm going to call draw rectangle. And instead of having this a public property that anybody can call, I just want it to be local so that only I can access it. And the reason I'm doing this is because if it's public, people will call it. And if they call it, I can't change it. But if I make it um, a local variable, then I can call it, but nobody else can. And that means I can change the implementation without breaking anybody else's code. So now I have a local variable, which is a function, draw a rectangle. And I can call draw a rectangle context with type and then break. And then I'm also going to have case circle and I'm not going to fill this in just yet. So let me stub it to so draw circle and a semicolon there. So basically, my draw function is just checking the type and then calling the appropriate draw. And I'll just stub this. And I'll fill it in later. 
So now if I go to my view where I'm creating these objects, I can go ahead and add my type. And then this one is going to be a circle. Should be comma there. All right, so if this was working correctly, I should see my green rectangle, but nothing for the green for the blue circle because I haven't implemented that yet. So let's test it and see if it works. Okay, so I'm getting an error. Let's go ahead and look at that. Ah, so I have to say shape dot shape type dot rectangle here. here as well. Good. So I have my rectangle and my circle isn't doing anything yet. So let's make our circle do something. Now I want to use the ellipse um, function or the ellipse method of context, um, but unfortunately um, that's not supported in all versions of JavaScript. Um, in particular, it doesn't work in Internet Explorer. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll, imp I'll just use ellipse for now, um, and then I'll make it work for Internet Explorer as well. So the way this is going to work is uh, I need to know my uh, x radius and my y radius, and also my x center and my y center. So the x center is going to be just x and y. So var x is scale and properties dot x to width and var y is scale and properties dot y to height and then my x radius is going to be scale radius to width and then my y radius is going to be scale the radius to height. Um, now I can begin my path. Oh, I have to pass that in. So I'm going to begin my path. And then I'm going to draw my ellipse, or add an ellipse to the path. And I think the arguments here are going to be my x and y, x radius, y radius. And then I think there's a rotation in here. I'm not to check the I'm, I'm going to have to check the arguments to this. So let's see, what kind of object is that? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the debugger, actually F12 to go to the debugger, so F12. And then I'm going to put a breakpoint on my circle, what I call draw circle. And let's take a look at what kind of thing the context is. So the context is a canvas rendering context 2D. So canvas rendering context 2D and ellipse and so here are the parameters so x, y, x radius, y radius then rotation which is going to be 0 start angle is 0 and end angle is going to be 2 pi and then anti-clockwise I don't really care about it. so we'll go Rotation is 0, from 0 to 2 times math.pi, and false. And then context.close path, and context.close path. 
fill. And rather than having the fill style here, I'm always going to want to draw the color. So I'm going to put that on the draw method. And let's see if that works. So get rid of the breakpoint and hit reload. And it hasn't worked yet. Let's put a breakpoint here and see if we get anything. Okay, so we are getting here. Let's see what our values look like. So x radius is not a number. Oh, because I, I forgot to specify the radius property on the object. So let's go to our view. And instead of width and height, this should just have radius. And we actually want this to be half of the width. So stop and reload. Good, so these all look fine. So let's go ahead and continue. Boom, and we have our circle, which is drawn as an ellipse to handle the scaling. All right, so that works in Chrome. So let's start Internet Explorer. And then I'm going to paste in that URL, so the URL to my simple draw. And you'll see we get the rectangle, but we don't get the circle. So I'm going to do something called monkey patching. And uh, basically the idea here is that you can override or set any property in any method on any class, pretty much, in JavaScript, including built-in classes, like this drawing context here. So. If we look at our code, we saw that there was a drawing, rendering, context 2D, or some such class um, that uh, this canvas actually inherits that this context actually inherits the ellipse method from. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set a new method on context if one doesn't exist for ellipse. So we're going to modify a built-in class to support compatibility with a new feature in a backwards compatible way. Now, as I said, you can override any method on any class. So you could, for example, add methods to the array class or add methods to the function class or whatever you want to do. But that's generally frowned upon except for this one specific kind of thing to do. So modifying a built-in class for compatibility with new language features, that's considered acceptable, but modifying built-in classes to just add your own random stuff, that's not considered acceptable. So when you modify for forward compatibility, that's called monkey patching. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at whether anybody already has a monkey patch for ellipse on the drawing context, which once again, I have trouble remembering what it was, canvas rendering context. So I'm going to look for canvas rendering context 2D. And the way that you override an existing language feature like that is by setting the value on something called the prototype. So canvas rendering context 2D Make sure I have the case right on that. No, it's capital D. Dot prototype. Dot ellipse is equal to a new function that takes some arguments. We have to basically it's going to take this list x y x x radius y radius rotation and so on. Now. The way inheritance works in JavaScript is that when you access an object like context and you try to refer to a method or a property on context that doesn't exist, it looks 
on the dot prototype property of the object to see whether it's defined on that prototype. And if it's not defined there, it looks on the prototype's prototype. And if it's not defined there, it looks on the prototype's prototype's prototype. And eventually you get all the way up to object, which is the root class for all objects in JavaScript. And if it's not there, then you end up returning undefined. So if you want to have it find something that isn't defined on context, then you only have to define it once by modifying the prototype of the class. So Canvas Rendering Context 2D is the class of context. By modifying the prototype, I'm basically adding a new method to any context that's created in that, in that class. So I only want to do this if it's not already defined. So I start by saying if Canvas Rendering Context 2D dot prototype dot ellipse is not equal equal undefined, then I'm going to set Canvas Rendering Context dot prototype dot ellipse. I'm sorry, is equal to undefined. So if it's not defined already, go ahead and define it. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. and go to Google and let's see what we get when we search for it. Okay. So obviously I've looked at all of these already. Um, but let's take a look at the first one. So here's an example of monkey patching canvas rendering context to have ellipse, but um, this is not taking the same arguments as we want. So x, y, width, and height. That doesn't match what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and refine our search a little bit. Um, we know that it takes a rotation parameter, so let's add rotation. And let's look at this one. So here's a book. And this is actually exactly what we need. This is taking exactly the right arguments, but unfortunately, this is not in copy pastable form. So, so it's exactly the right code and we could type it in, but I'm lazy, don't want to type that all in. So let's see if we can find it somewhere else. Nope, that's uh, not the right one. Oh, so this is the right parameter list. So let's look at what we have here. Let's find ellipse. Okay, well, let's give that a shot. So I'm going to copy this function here. And uh, let's go ahead and paste it in. And let's fix the indentation a little bit. And then close off our if statement. Let's save and see if we get the same thing in Internet Explorer as we do in Chrome. Perfect. Okay, so now I've just changed a base class in Internet Explorer to do the same thing as Chrome does, called monkey patching.